Welcome to Black Nouveau. This is our edition for October. I'm James Causey, sitting in for Joanne Williams. The Fellowship Open is an annual golf outing and fundraiser that is developing the next generation of leaders in Wisconsin. We'll talk with Kaylin Haywood, a developer who is helping to change Milwaukee's landscape. And we'll hear from a Kenosha native, Bethany Thomas. She portrays five legendary singers in the Milwaukee Reps production of Songs for Nobodies. The 10th Annual Milwaukee Film Festival starts this month. The Black Lens Strand has something for everyone. Here's a preview. Listen, ladies, tonight we're going to have a good time. We're going to turn all the way up. We got girl. Yeah. What are you doing? Stop. What are you doing? Rap is like the Bible, G. What more can I say? We top billing it. Word is bond. I'm colored, Jewish, and Puerto Rican. When I move into a neighborhood, I wipe it out. It's no fun to walk into a place you're going to play and be told that we've had 14 bomb threats. Even if you win, you don't win. We are joined now by Gerard Blanks, co-programmer for the Black Lens Strand of the Milwaukee Film Festival. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Well, we have a lot in this film package, from hip hop to jazz. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Mr. Soul. So Mr. Soul uh, is a variety show, interview show from the 1970s, and it was hosted by Ellis Haslip. What's interesting about Mr. Soul is that a lot of people don't even know that it existed. And this is a show that came straight out of the black power, black arts movement of the late 60s and early 70s. And when we were watching this film, I was blown away because like, I didn't know this film existed, and to see this show and this this host do things that just should not have been done <laughs> in the early 70s. Um, it's really the precursor to everything that comes after it, whether it's Oprah Winfrey, Arsenio Hall, I mean, American Bandstand, uh, Soul Train. Everything sort of started with Mr. Soul. Um, it's an amazing portrait of an amazing man during amazing times, interviewing some of the best musical acts, activists, leaders, athletes in the world. So it's one of the films that um, we're most proud that we've, we've brought to the festival, and it's directed by Sam Pollard, who is uh, a master at the documentary genre. So Word is Bond is a hip hop film. Can you talk about that? So Word is Bond is, it's interesting. It um, was first showcased, it was a film done uh, exclusively for Showtime. Mm -hmm. Nobody saw it. I didn't, and, and I'm a hip hop, which was called a hip hop head. I knew nothing about it. My co-programmer, co Dante McFadden, knew nothing about it. So when we got the, the screener for it, we were really excited. Uh, but there was some hesitancy because there have been a lot of hip-hop documentaries. So it was kind of like, what's, what is this one doing that others aren't? And this one really examined, examines the art of lyricism, right? It really looks at it as a literary, a, a legitimate literary form. Mm -hmm. So it talks to a dozen rappers about what it takes for them to create the perfect line, the perfect rhyme, the perfect song. It's really interesting exploration of you know, what it is to be a wordsmith. So it's Nas and I saw Biggie in there too, so it looks like a lot of good people. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing collection of people you know and people you don't know so well. A Boy, A Girl, in a Dream. So that is a film uh, directed by Kasim. I always struggle a little bit with the name, Kasim Basir. Mm -hmm. And it stars, um, you might know him from Power, Omari Hardwick, uh, Megan Good, Jay Ellis. It's a, so this is a film that caught our attention partly because it's shot, it's one shot, there are no cuts. So um, this is a film that is gonna challenge some of our audience, but I think people will really enjoy it. Sammy Davis Jr. So that's another film directed by Sam Pollard. Like I said, he's, a, he's brilliant. 
Um, so I saw this film thinking we were just gonna, you know, see a biopic about Sammy's music, right? And his dancing and his career. This film was really about his struggle with identity, cultural identity. And it's interesting to know that Sammy was maligned by the white community and the black community alike. But at the same time, he did something. He was such a pioneering figure that I think by the end of this film, you'll understand him a little bit more and appreciate um, not just his music, but his, his journey. And there's a special screening on October 10th. Yes, so I don't know if you're familiar with The Hate You Gave. Uh, yes. Hate You Give, The Hate, Hate You, you Give, <laughs> right. By George Tillman Jr. By George Tillman, who is a Marshall High School alum, such as myself. And I'm a Marshall okay. Brad as well. Okay, so we all need to make sure we're in the building for that. That's gonna be amazing. Uh, we're one of very few cities around the country that are getting this advanced screening. Mm -hmm. So there'll be more information on our website. Uh, milwaukeefilm.org as that all comes together but he will be here for that screening. Will he be in town for that? Oh yeah, he's okay. going to be there. That's awesome. Yeah. Now uh, tell us briefly about, briefly about the special events coming up during the festival. So this year we've really outdone ourselves. Um, we have an event for, uh, we have a few events so I don't know if you're familiar with the Netflix series She's Gotta Have It. Oh of course. Yeah, so we're bringing Nola Darling. Oh, yeah, Nola Dwayne. Darling. What does yeah. she look like now? Um, well, we're bringing DeWanda Wise from the oh, series. Oh, not the original. Yes. Okay, okay gotcha. <laughs> and I have to make sure I explain that to people okay. because it's the series, not the original film. Gotcha. So we're bringing her to UWM. Um, that's going to be Monday, October 29th. We're bringing journalist and commentator Tere, as well as journalist Aisha Harris from the New York Times, and for a screening and a panel discussion about a film called Black Enough, about black cultural identity. Um, and we've got, oh, we've actually got a panel about Word is Bond. We got a bunch of local wordsmiths talking about the film. That's awesome. Well, this sounds like a great festival. Can't wait to see it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You can see more of our conversation with Gerard Blanks on our website, milwaukeepbs.org. Two players to play for the Green Bay Packers out of 10,000 who have played in one game uh, for the Packers over the last 100 years to receive a PhD, and one of them is standing before you. That's former Green Bay Packer Dr. George Kuntz speaking at the 18th Annual Fellowship Open held at the Silver Spring Country Club this past summer. The fellowship open a golf outing raises money for youth charities and has raised more than $2 million to that effort. Each year, the open awards those who have shown a commitment to philanthropy and service. Dr. Coons was awarded the Fellowship Open Legends Award and said he felt overwhelmed. Because this is the first award that I've kind of won or I'm being honored outside of uh, the football field or athletics. Other awardees during this weekend event were attorney David Gruber, the Fellowship Open Community Leader honoree. I love the community, I love this city, and uh, it's a tremendous honor. It's just a privilege. And the Civic Award went to former NBA player LaRouth Martin Jr., a community relations public affairs manager with UPS. Always an honor to get the recognition. I believe in giving back to the community. Each year, three to four different organizations are chosen to be supported by the Fellowship Open. One program they have supported that stands out is the MKE Fellows Program, a program for building African-American male leaders. The program started in 2012 with the objective of helping 10 young men go to Morehouse College. When they got done with their first semester, they realized that tuition and books weren't en enough, that they really needed to find a way to continue to wrap their arms around the young people. And so we developed a program of professional development, lunch and learns, and started really this internship placement, which has really just been key for our young people. Before I got into the fellows, 
I really didn't know what direction I wanted to go in as a professional. Um, I didn't even have the tool set as a professional to get to where I wanted to be. So um, the fellows really shaped me so much as a professional. These last three, four years have been phenomenal. And I just felt myself grow, not only as a professional, but as a man and as a father as well. It gave me the exposure to, uh, let's say, corporate America. And also just gave me a lot of exposure to what the city of Milwaukee has to offer for me as a young adult. Not only does it provide, um, you know, s daily skills that you may use, but just professional socialization um, um, and personal skills that you can use every day, uh, professional skills. So that's the most important piece for me, the mentorship. I want to be a lawyer, so I've been exposed to so many of the renowned attorneys that we know of. As a matter of fact, two weeks ago I was just with uh, Eric Holder, um, all because of Attorney Dame. So. Uh, the mentorship is definitely uh, a key aspect, and the resources, scholarships. They give out book scholarships, um, and they also give out scholarships uh, to fill the gap between, um, let's say, you not quite, uh, not quite there as far as paying all your tuition. If it's some way that they can fill in that gap, they definitely will. The fellows made an impression on former NBA player Sidney Moncrief, who runs Game Changer, a people development company that interacts with them. And you always know when they're there because of their presence, number one, their dress, their posture, their experience, their exposure. It's just a, it's a really huge treat to have them there because they help to engage and challenge the other students that we have in our classes. A lot of times, you know, I've, and a couple of my friends have had the mindset like, you know, you have to go outside Wisconsin, even outside Milwaukee to, you know, uh, meet successful people, you know, who not only look like me, but like, who are thriving and like living like uh, the, out their dreams, you know, because I thought that there's like no opportunity here. But being around all these fellows and seeing that they're succeeding and they're doing it here, like th that's priceless to me. We found that uh, through our professional mentors and our uh, coaches and our staff, we've been able to help young people uh, reach for the stars and achieve things that even they didn't think were, impo uh, were possible at the beginning. They definitely uh, are genuine and, and, and take, you know, take, take strong pride in, in being able to uh, show us the way uh, in terms of how best to navigate through life and best to navigate through Milwaukee. Um, and also they want us to be able to have uh, as much exposure as possible to the things that are very, very promising in life in terms of, you know, financial literacy or, or corporate leadership. There's limitless opportunities um, being a fellow, so they just put you in the right place. They just give you the key and you have to open the door. I can't be thankful, more thankful for this opportunity and to, to grow through this program because without it, I honestly don't know if I would have been able to pull those tool sets out of me, you know, to, to see to see my worth and to see my potential. We have young people and, and people that are in the community that's making a difference and they're filling the pipeline with future leaders that can continue to impact our community. Some people uh, look at the Fellowship Open and they look at the sports stars that we've honored from Hank Aaron to Oscar Robinson and even this year, uh, George Kuntz and LaRue Martin. But what I look at is I look at the long list of youth organizations uh, that we have continued to help. This year we'll uh, help Signature Dance Company, 100 Black Men of Madison, and then there was an arts program at uh, Black Arts Fest MKE. And so some of those educational initiatives that help young people really find their passion and grow, uh, when we're able to help those organizations uh, that are doing the groundwork, it's absolutely phenomenal. These buildings are part of a changing landscape of Milwaukee. They were developed by our guest, Kaylin Haywood, president of the Haywood Group LLC. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, so let's get started. You are the first African-American developer to have a building downtown when you developed the Germania building in 2014 and you renovated it. Let's talk a little bit about that. Why did it take so long? Uh, why did it take so long for? Our African-American to. <laughs> um, well, we have to, get, we, we have to get the population of Milwaukee in this room to answer that question of why, that, why it took so long. Okay. Um, sometimes I struggle with when people say, 
or we get the title, or I get the title of being the first at something in, the, in our city, it's a, it's a conflict of emotions. Part of me, I'm, I'm proud that I've helped advance and move my community and my city forward, but I'm also often perplexed that it took so long. You know, it's 2018 or the town 2014 with Germania. Of why did it, why? Why am I the first um, in a town like this? So um, we purchased Germania in 2014. Uh, began construction in 2015 mm -hmm. and uh, opened it up for service up for for residents in 2017. So we've been open a year now and we're 100% occupied. Um, the thought behind Germania was very simple for me. It, it was I didn't set out with let me be the first downtown, um, first African American downtown. The thought was with Germania was how do I provide access to people of color, people from that are from where I'm from, to live, work, and play downtown to enjoy the amenities of the Riverwalk, the theater, the restaurants, the new arena. How do I bring a product to market that will be open um, and make people feel welcome to live? Now you develop everything from uh, townhouses to you know, um, hotels. Mm -hmm. What do you like doing the most? Uh, anything that uh, inspires um, my city, anything that inspires my community, anything that inspires um, someone coming up behind me, um, anything that exposes people to this real estate development. You know, real estate development is everything. It is our built environment. It's where we sleep, work, play, uh, where we study, uh, where we go for health care, where we buy our food. And that's all a part of the makeup of our city. It's our skyline, it's our downtown, but it's north, south side, and west side. So I, have, I don't have a favorite type of um, when it comes to actual building structure or end use. But I do have a favorite type when it comes to what actually improves and advances um, the overall agenda. Why don't we see more African Americans in development? Well, naturally, the stat is that um, out of the whole real estate development industry, um, less than 1% are people of color. Mm. Of that 1%, less than half are African Americans. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons why. Uh, it's just the... Um, how we've advanced as a country uh, and, and, and real estate development, you've been in high school before. If you were to open up your counselor's uh, career book in, in your sophomore or junior year, real estate development is not listed. You know, sometimes it's often hidden in construction or engineering or architecture, um, but the, the actual real estate development is not there, which to me is sometimes intriguing. Um, the, other, the other reasons I see is that um, even once someone understands that real estate development is an opportunity, an uh, actual career, um, and uh, as important a part of our city as any other industry, um, there's barriers to entry, uh, whether it's finance, um, access to capital, um, and just the overall know-how, you know, gotcha. um, to get into the game. Let's talk about the Sears development, the uh, project on Fond du Lac and North. What are your plans for that? Um, to date, it's probably going to be, um, it's, it's it's, one of, it's the one I'm most excited about. At one time, I was excited about Germania, and I'm proud of how it ended. At one time, I was proud of our grocery store developments. But the old Milwaukee Mall, or Sears, depending on what generation you're from, right. um, will be a campus. The campus that we foresee now will include a um, boutique hotel. Mm -hmm. It will include a new parking structure. It will include convention space, conference space. Um, it will include uh, office, an uh, office, uh, um, piece as well component and some housing. Uh, what we wanted to do with the Milwaukee Mall redevelopment is how do we not only keep dollars in the community, but how do we attract dollars to this side of town that normally would not be here? Now, that's an area that people would say, can the neighborhood support it? You believe that it can, why? Um, for multiple reasons. Um, if you look at, you constantly hear these reports of the African American spin, annual spin. So we understand that we have the money, um, but I think that someone, something or someone has to be the first to get that train started. Um, this, this development now gives us, gives us the opportunity to hire from the community, but mostly, and this is what we say around our firm, we're not only building buildings, we're building people and we're building opportunity. This falls right into our, our model, our business model, of building opportunity. Mm -hmm. When people see it at the end of the day, they're gonna feel different about their zip code, about their neighborhood, about their property value, um, and to walk in that door and be able to possibly get a job, um, then you start to dream. Once you have access, you start to dream of, maybe I can be a hotel owner, or maybe I can be a developer. So that's the intent there. The bricks and mortar is something we do with our eyes closed. But what we, what we really wanna do and make sure we stay focused on throughout the process is, are we building opportunity? 
and are we building people? Mm -hmm. How many, uh, real quick, how many people do you plan for that location to hire? Um, you know, it'll be hundreds. Um, the hotel itself, in, in total, we think it's going to be a 75, approximately $75 million development um, over a span of years, hotel being the first component. Uh, and I think that um, okay. not only temporary construction, but long-term permanent employment would be a uh, key. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Five Divas Sing and Five Ordinary Women Tell Their Stories in the Milwaukee Rep's production of Songs for Nobodies. Bethany Thomas plays all of the characters and brings each one to life. The play is about stories of people. It's about five women who meet or tell about their connection to a famous singer. And you kind of get to hear about how that person made them feel or how that how they live their life kind of in this person's shadow sometimes like that. Um, so it's, it's about five, we call them nobodies, but it's just women that you wouldn't notice if you walk past them maybe. Like one of them's a bathroom attendant or a librarian. And it's just with their, their brushes at something that they perceived as more brilliant, so brilliant that it, you know, conducts energy in other people. It's with all these five women and their brush with that kind of force in the form of these famous singers. Thomas is no stranger to the Milwaukee Rep. She's been in a number of musicals there during the last five years. The Rep have been really, really cool to me. I think that they, uh, from the first show I came in to work on, which was Ragtime back in 2013, um, I just the casting directors and, and the directors and people that work here a lot have kind of recognize more in me than other people have, I guess. Because I know that I, I'm loud <laughs> and, and fun to have in an ensemble sometimes, but I'm glad that they thought of this piece and were like, I know somebody who can do all those voices. Cause I, I, I don't know, I think there are a lot of places that might not have thought of somebody like me to do a piece like this, but I, I love it. I, I love working in small, intimate spaces. If my man ain't got no money, and I say take all my honey. How did a little girl from Kenosha get into this business? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if Milwaukee knows, but Kenosha has excellent theater programs in high school, like for the high school level. Um, I worked with Holly Stanfield, who's like a nationally renowned theater director, high school theater director, and we did lots and lots and lots of shows. Like I probably had done 40 different kind of productions by the time I graduated from high school. No, 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 don't turn that dial. You're all in for a big surprise. Her musical tastes aren't limited to Broadway. I've always wanted, I've always loved rock music. Um, that's kind of what I grew up listening to a lot. My dad played guitar. And, uh, so when I was old enough to go to bars, like basically, I that's all I would do is go out and see rock shows. And I joined kind of a punk blues band in my early 20s and screamed all night after doing like two performances of Fiorello somewhere. Deep within the heart lies a melody, a song of old Chanton. It's been cool. I get to do music when there's no theater going on, and then sometimes have to make a little, if there's a project that I'm really excited about, like this one, say, okay, I can't, we can't book anything for a while, and hopefully you don't lose that momentum when it's time to come back to it. It's been a tricky balancing act, actually. Songs for Nobodies continues at the Milwaukee Rep through November the 4th. Later that month, she takes on the role of Motormouth Maybell in the Skylight Music Theater's production of Hairspray. While we're on the subject of the performing arts, 
Tony and Grammy Award winner Leslie Odom Jr. will be profiled on this month's edition of the Arts Page, October 25th at 9 p.m. Here's a clip. When you get a Broadway show, you can think, I thought that I don't know, like pixie dust is sprinkled on you or something at the stage door on your way in and you suddenly become a different performer than you ever were, but you're not. You know, the same integrity, the same fearless heart and, you know, courage that you develop in your hometown and the same big watt smile that you have in, in Wisconsin or, you know, wherever you're performing that, you bring that with you to the Broadway stage. And that's what we see. So I, it, was, it was just this wonderful realization of, um, it doesn't matter the stage. The stages that I get to perform on are, are a great honor to me, but I would be performing in the same exact way, whether it's at the White House or your mom's house. We note the recent passing of Arthur Mitchell, the first black ballet dancer to achieve international stardom and the founder of the Dance Theater of Harlem. Mr. Mitchell was 84. We also note the recent passing of Brigadier General Robert Cocroft. He was a 40-year Vietnam-era veteran whose service extended beyond his military retirement. He was one of the founders of the group that became the National Association for Black Veterans and he has served as the director of that organization for many years. Cocroft was also president and CEO of the Center for Veterans Affairs in Milwaukee. He is survived by a wife and two children. There is more information about the Milwaukee Film Festival and interviews with some of MKE's fellows on our website, milwaukeepbs.org. And that's our program for this month. For Black Nouveau, I'm James Causey, and for Joanne Williams, good night.